Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, just a quick pickups video, really, and it will be very short. This video, there's not much to show you. Um, firstly, um, yeah, book by Jimmy Maher. Uh, if that's how you say his name, uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, yeah, the future was here, Commodore Amiga. Um, it's not what I expected. This book. Um, it's more, you know, initially you would think it's perhaps about the history and stuff, um, and it is, but it's the history of the technicality sort of side of things. So. You know, it starts off uh, by going on, I think there's a se whole section there on the Amiga Boeing demo, uh, a bit about the history and a bit about how t it was, how it worked technically. Um, you know, the stuff about uh, Deluxe Paint, there's a whole sort of chunk of this book dedicated to Deluxe Paint and how it sort of brought the video um, uh, graphics editing scene um, into the modern world really and how it sort of set a standard and, um, you know, um, it's like I say that there's more technical stuff in here than sort of typical, you know, the typical history you would get. It's, this isn't a sort of the history of the Amiga, it's more technical history of the Amiga. As you can see here, look, you've got um, an assembly list in there. Um, so it's not what I expected, but it's, it's, it's a, it is a good book. Um, but if you're looking at this from the point of view of, you know, thinking it's going to be all about the history of the Amiga and all the different models and some of the sort of anecdotes of stories and things that surrounded the, the marketing, manufacturing and publishing and all the rest of it, you're not going to get that. What you've got in here, like I say, is, is a bit of a technical behind the scenes um, history sort of thing. So yeah, it's, it's a good book. It's not a brilliant book, um, it, but I'll finish reading that and I'll, uh, yeah. Um, this was, I've got to thank um, Laird. Um, check out Laird's Lair. I'll put a link in my uh, channel, in the, the, the comment section for this. But um, yeah, this is, I, I don't know when this came out, well it says old for 2004, so it came out this year, I'm guessing it came out January or February. Um, he did a review of this, uh, mentioned this, I think he'd done an article himself uh, that's in here, and it's just wonderful, it really is. I mean it's a bit expensive, I think it's about 10 quid or something, you can order this directly from their website, uh, it doesn't even say the price on it actually. Uh, what's this on the back? Oh yeah, it does, yeah, there we go, 9 99 yeah, so if you go to imaginebookshops.co.uk, you can order it from there. I think you can get this in new news agents as well, like WH Smiths and stuff, depends on you know, uh, this, what size of shop you go to. But this is available off the shelf as well, but um, you can order it online. Um, I think there's a pound or two postage, so it ends up costing you about 12 quid. But um, yeah, as you can see, it's, you know, it's very detailed. We've got Mega CD there, uh, for CDI, you know, pretty much everything. Um, I think there was, I'm trying to remember now, there was one system that I didn't see in here. If we just look at the index here, we've got Fairchild, 2600 Television, Game Watch. I don't know the Game Watch was there, I missed that section. Uh, ZS31, BBC Micro. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, there's an absolute ton of systems there, right up to the Neo Geo Pocket, and you've got the Sega Dreamcast, I was pleased that that was in there. Um, I'm trying to remember what that system was. There is, there is a system missing out of here. I'm like, hmm, that surprises me. They missed that out completely. Um, but anyway, yeah, for the most part, it's all there. Um, you, typically, this, for the smaller systems, you've got like two or three pages. It's like the BBC Micro. Uh, it's probably four pages. Is it? Oh, it's not. A little bit more. Quite a bit more, actually. Yeah, so some, some you see, that's like that, six pages there for the BBC. Some of them have got six or seven pages, some have got one or two pages. Uh, there's only a few that have got one or two pages. Most of them have got at least four or five pages. So, um, and it's interesting, you know, it's interesting stuff. There's a lot of games here that I wouldn't have thought of looking, um, you know, trying and stuff um, until I've got this. Um, and a bit about the history and all the rest of it. And some interviews with some pretty interesting people. Um, is it Dave Perry or whatever he's called, one of the guys that used to be uh, in the games industries. He's done a few things on here. There's, there's even uh, references to Trip Hawkins as well, so I don't know if they managed to get some <coughs> interviews with him, but yeah, well worth uh, getting that. So I haven't had a chance to have a good read of it yet, but yeah, recommended. Um, and then a couple of things for the Atari ST here. Um, this is one of Lothrax's latest uh, projects, the Netus B. Um, so it gets its name from the network connector and the USB, so it's Netus B. Um, yeah, and it's just the way that works, it just plugs into the cartridge port um, on the side of the ST. Uh, it just goes in there like that and provides you with two USB ports and um, an RJ45 network, you know, for Ethernet. 
So uh, yeah, with the right bit of software, you get, there's a driver, a mouse driver, it's a single file, it's not very big. You can just run it, stick it in your auto folder or something and then your mouse, your mouse will work. You can use a USB mouse. Um, I didn't really get it for that, I just got it for the fact that I want, I'm a bit of a completionist really. I wouldn't I'd like to pass up an opportunity of having you know, a, a network and a USB um, adapter for the ST. It'd be really good, I might even have a look at this myself, it'd be really good if someone could pro provide a small driver or some software that you could, where you could stick a USB um, storage, you know, a um, USB memory stick or something in there, that'd be really, really, really useful. Um, doesn't need to be a driver, maybe just an app that allows you to just, you know, connect to whatever's there, um, a USB hard disk even, because once you, once you know, I guess it's really, there's no difference. What's the difference between a USB a memory stick and um, a USB hard disk? It's, you know, it's just all about partition size, I guess. Um, so yeah, you could do the same. You could have a USB hard disk connected to this. That'd be really, really useful. Um, not necessarily to like say OS level. I guess you could do it with a driver. It might take up a bit of memory. Might give you some incompatibilities there. But for just messing around in um, Gem, that might be uh, a good solution. You might be able to you know run things from hard disk and stuff. Or, you know, an external hard disk from there. I don't think the throughput's going to be very good. Um, but still, be useful um, anyway. So that was my main reason for getting that. Um, and like I say, I've got the RJ45 as well there. Um, the software for that looks a little bit more tricky to set up. Um, and I'm not really sure whether I would use that to be fair. Um, because, you know, the ST is not that fast. Um, even with the 16 megahertz, you know, I'm not even sure what browsers there are available. Um, you know, they're going to be pretty basic. They're going to be the original versions of HTML. It's not going to support style sheets and, or XML and all the latest things that browsers support these days, um, even the Java, it's not, it probably doesn't even, do, doesn't even support the JavaScript. So I don't really know, you, you could use it for things like Telnet, you could use it for FTP, you know, I, I, a lot of people do use it for FTP, um, and even bulletin boards, um, you know, there's still some bulletin boards out there, so you can get your ST online that way, you could connect to bulletin boards and download and upload software and stuff, so it's fairly interesting I guess, um, I just need to get some, find some time, just like always, around all of these things to, to look at that, and here we go, uh, another pickup is another car, so this also is for the Atari ST, and let's see if I can get it out of here, one hand, there we go, revision 4.3, um, yeah, it's just a diagnostics car for the Atari ST, so, um, I'll, I'll show you just quickly actually while I'm here how this works. So you just plug it in the, the, the car port again. Uh, am I in the right place here? There we go. So you just plug it in the car port and I'll just connect the power. Just bear with me. Right, there we go. It is working. Uh, trust me. <laughs> My doctor. No, I'm not. But Trust me, it's working. If I toggle the video mode, it's because it's on 60 hertz and this capture card. How do you do it? Oh, I'm pressing the BMW keyboard. Problem with the two keyboards. There you go. Right, so you've got um, yeah, the diagnostic, diagnostics uh, menu there. It's useful, you know, it shows you some stuff straight away. 4 mega RAM, that's fine. Keyboard revision, 50 hertz, version of your toss, UK PAL. Uh, and then you've just got a whole bunch of different options there. Um, I'm sorry about the glare off the screen. It's uh, I got a new, it's a new 3D screen that I got at Christmas and it's a great screen um, it's pretty cheap but uh, this whole glossy what's this glossy thing they've got going on with the, this thing now you get loads and loads of glare on these things uh, but anyway yeah you can just uh, you can do all the different tests here um, you can also it's got an option there to set the RS232 rate the, the reason being is what you can do with this is if you've got connect up the RS232 port to maybe a PC um, put some terminal software on connect to the relevant speed and you can get, you know, you can see, uh, I expect, you know, it gives you an output of what's going on diagnostics wise to that serial port. Um, and that's useful. If you knew what the default was for this, you could navigate this menu without, have, you know, if you can't see the screen, if you've got a black screen, you could just press the relevant keys and, um, you know, like R for RAM, press return, and you should get some output out of the serial port. There may even be a key, keys you can hold down on uh, power up and stuff to automatic, you know, to automatically test certain things. Honestly, don't know. Um, you'd need to do a bit more research, but this is really useful. Um, yeah, it says up there. It's interesting. It's, uh, yeah, 4.3, definitely 4.3. Mega and ST field service diagnostics ref 4.3. Um, so yeah, it's really really useful that. Um, especially if your machine's not booting, if you're just getting some weird stuff going on, you know, weird stuff on this display, this could help you work out exactly what is wrong. Um, highly recommended. And these are only about 15, 20 quid. 
Um, you can actually get these still from in the UK. You can get these from uh, 16 slash 32 systems. He does them. Um, I think he sells them for about 20. You can also get them from Best um, Electronics in the uh, US. But um, yeah, if you're in Europe, you know Best. He's, he's you know he's a nice guy, but he always has this thing where he tries to ramp up the minimum order, so it can be a bit can be a bit hard getting unless you want to put a big order together. It can be hard to get small things like that from him. Um, I guess one final thing while we're on the subject, and I covered this yesterday in the video, I also got one of these badges, and these come from Best Electronics as well. Um, well and I've had this for a good few months now. Um, I got it with my last last time I ordered from Best. Um, there are a few people, st I just noticed in this last week, it's a bit topical, because someone started selling these on eBay as well. Um, they seem to have quite a few, so I'm guessing they must have bought a good 20 or 30 or something, bought them in bulk. So if you want a 4160 STE badge, um, you know, have a look on eBay right now because there are some available. Um, but I guess that's it really, yeah, for now. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.